they're beeping at me in case you can't hear. All right, praise God. Well, thank you for joining us on this beautiful spring day in Iowa. Um, thank you especially to Luke uh, Arnold, who is making this all possible, and Alyssa and Corgan for being up here and worshiping in this crazy cold weather. So, um, well, praise God. No matter what the weather looks like today, no matter what the conditions of our lives bring, nothing can ever change the fact, the objective truth, that Jesus Christ died on a cross and rose from the grave today. And it is no coincidence that our world right now is rapidly falling under sickness and fear and sadness and grief from the loss of many lives uh, during this Holy Week. But the same Jesus who died and rose again on the first Holy Week warned us many times that this world would be unstable and that great trials would come upon us. But he also said in John 16.33, I have told you these things so that In me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. Jesus Christ has already overcome coronavirus and pandemics. We just can't see it yet. One day he he will overcome all pandemics, all cancer, all tragedies, or anything else that causes us pain and trouble. Just as he has already overcome the power of Satan in our lives and the effects of sin on a fallen humanity, he has already overcome it all. He has conquered it by the bloodshed on the cross, and he completed it when he rose on victory on Easter morning 2,000 years ago. So if you know Jesus today, you know the source of victory. It's a source of victory through isolation. It's a source of victory through persecution, intubation, humiliation, tribulation, and even death itself. It is not the end today, but a powerful beginning and a testimony for us that we can be overcomers in the days we live in through every single trial that comes our way because God has given us this ultimate sign that He is real He loves us, and our eternal life is guaranteed in Him alone. That is the miraculous sign of what happened 2,000 years ago after Jesus died on the cross. He rose from the grave, and there is no greater evidence for us in Christianity than what happened this day. Let's read the account today in John chapter 20, starting in verse 1. Now on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb early while it was still dark and saw that the stone had been taken away from the tomb. Then she ran and came to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved and said to them, They have taken away the Lord out of the tomb and we do not know where they have laid him. Peter therefore went out and the other disciple and were going to the tomb. So they both ran together. And the other disciple outran Peter and came to the tomb first. Then he, stooping down and looking in, saw the linen cloths lying there, yet he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. And he saw the linen cloths lying there, and the handkerchief that had been around his head, not lying with the linen cloths, but folded together in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who came to the tomb first, went in also, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not know the scripture, that he must rise again from the dead. Then the disciples went away again to their own homes. But Mary stood outside the tomb weeping, and she wept and stooped down and looked into the tomb. And she saw the two angels in white sitting, one at the head and the other at the feet where the body of Jesus had laid. And they said to her, woman, why are you weeping? And she said to them, because they have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. Now when she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there and did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, woman, why are you weeping? 
whom are you seeking? She, supposing him to be a gardener, said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She returned and said to him, Rabbani, which is to say, Teacher. And Jesus said to her, Do not cling to me, for I have not yet ascended to my father. But go to my brethren and say to them, I am ascending to my father and your father and to my God and your God. Mary came and told the disciples that she had seen the Lord and that he had spoken these things to her. Then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in the midst of them and said, Peace be with you. And when he said this, he showed them his hands and his side, and the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be to you. As the Father has sent me, I also send you. Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. Now Thomas, called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. The other disciples therefore said to him, We have seen the Lord. So he said to them, unless I see his hands, the print of the nails, and put my finger into the print of the nails, and put my hands into his side, I will not believe. So after eight days, his disciples were again inside, and Thomas with them. Jesus came, the doors being shut, and stood in the midst and said, peace be to you. Then he said to Thomas, reach your finger here and look at my hands, and reach your hand here and put it into my side. Do not be unbelieving, but believing. And Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord, my God. Jesus said to him, Thomas, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe. And truly Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you may have life in his name. So we are those people who, having not seen, we can believe and have life. as This invisible air that we breathe, possibly tainted with sickness, people are dying, people are scrounging for food in some places, gripped by anxiety and panic. Everybody is searching right now for a sign that leads to uh, relief and peace and comfort. We wait for the next wave of the news to determine what we do next but then we're left empty and unsure of whom to trust because the news and the distractions of the world can never fill us up spiritually. No matter what happens, we have to look to the sign that has already been recorded and it's so clear for those who will uh, choose to find it and trust in it. This sign was spoken of in the garden from the beginning of the Bible. At creation, it was symbolized in that ark that survived the great flood. It was promised in a rainbow and carried in another ark by priests foreshadowed on that mercy seat in the ark according to God's own instructions that was made. It was prophesied by the prophet Isaiah to be born of a virgin miraculously and humbly in a stable witnessed by many. That's the reason we celebrate Christmas. Then to grow as a man and accomplish the will of God perfectly by showing us how to live and dying for us sinlessly, yet charged with every sin we could have ever committed and bearing all the judgment that we deserve. Then he, Jesus, completed that blood-drenched suffering on the cross that we now commemorate with communion and symbols on top of steeples. He conquered the grave we were all destined to by raising from the depths of the grave we deserved. He left an empty tomb never to die again. Just as sure as he ascended, he will return at his second coming in power and glory. So that sign for you that everything is going to be okay, it's Jesus Christ, the risen King. And if you need proof that God is real today, don't look up at the sky. Don't look down. You won't find it on your device. You won't find it in a Google search. You won't find it in your news feeds. It's the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And it's the same evidence that we need today that has never been disproven in 2,000 years. God manifested in the flesh. Jesus Christ raised from the dead on the third day 
was seen by many, many witnesses. And he came and he spoke peace. And he left his peace to a fearful generation still looking for a sign that had already happened. This is a fearful generation. Right now, people are full of fear and they can't look anywhere else for comfort today except for Jesus Christ. Now, we will not physically see him like they did yet. But even the ones who actually saw Jesus, remember, they didn't even believe. So seeing isn't actually believing like the phrase goes. Faith operates much differently than that. Faith is the evidence of things un unseen, as Hebrews 11 tells us. The Pharisees, they were looking for power. They were looking for prestige. They were looking for uh, military uh, and political power, kind of like people look for today. And they demanded this evidence and this proof, evidence of who he was, but they could not even see what was in front of them. Matthew 12, 38 says, Then some of the scribes and Pharisees answered, saying, Teacher, we want to see a sign from you. But Jesus answered and said to them, An evil and adulterous generation seeks after a sign, and no sign will be given except the sign of the prophet Jonah. For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of a great fish, so will the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. The men of Nineveh will rise up in the judgment with this generation and condemn it because they repented at the preaching of Jonah, and indeed a greater than Jonah is here. The sign Jesus mentions was himself, his own death and resurrection, and a greater than Jonah is here. There is no other way. There is no need to wait until your life or the world gets worse before you actually turn to him. He has already presented his offer of eternal life to each and every one of us. And his spirit now is calling his children home as this world draws close to an end. You also don't have to wait to be a better person because nothing you've done or will do could ever earn or dismiss what Jesus already paid for on the cross. He will forget your past even if you cannot. He will forgive your sins and erase the penalty for it even when you thought it was impossible. He'll give you a new life now and you don't have to wait for death to knock at your door to experience it. Jesus promises peace in the midst of chaos and after his resurrection, he made that crystal clear. Some of his first words were, peace be with you. And those disciples needed it because they were in fear of these religious Jews coming and attacking them. And they were unsure of themselves. They hadn't known that Jesus had fu fully risen yet. But then they saw his pierced hands in his side. And they knew beyond a shadow of a doubt he is risen. John 20, 21. So Jesus said to them again, peace to you. As the Father has sent me, I send you. And when he said this, he breathed on them, and he said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. This is where salvation began. That we are all offered now, and it started after the first Easter, so that we could be raised from the dead. In this life, not trembling in fear like the disciples, unsure of our faith, not acting as if God has forsaken, forsaken us during a crisis, but walking and boldly living the new life Christ died for us to have. Jesus physically ascended to heaven, but he left us now with something greater than physical proof, and that's his Holy Spirit. And the early church was empowered by that Holy Spirit. And we have the same access today. The Spirit is still here, still speaking the words of Jesus and still offering us life today. He still says in the midst of storms, John 10, 9, I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. The thief does not come except to steal, to kill, and to destroy. I have come that they may have life and they may have it more abundantly. Jesus still says in the midst of circumstances, for just as the Father gives life to those he raises from the dead, so the Son gives life to anyone He wants, and He wants you today. He desires you just like a father or a mother desires their child, but it's unlike any other earthly relationship because only Jesus can actually raise you from the dead. Now, today, Ephesians 2 says, And you He made alive who were dead in trespasses and sins, in which you once walked according to the course of the world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience, among whom also we 
all once conducted ourselves in the lusts of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were once by nature children of wrath, just as the others. But God, who is so rich in mercy, because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved and raised us up together and made us to sit in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and it's not of yourselves, it's a gift of God. Not of works, lest anyone should boast, for we are his workmanship created for good works in Jesus Christ, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Jesus has the authority to make you spiritually alive if you will crown him king of your heart today. No one else deserves a crown except Jesus Christ in your heart. Not even your fears, not your situations, not your past, and not your future. No trial or tribulation that comes your way, and surely not a coronavirus, which ironically means crown virus because of the, the way the little spikes are on the virus cells. And many people right now are making this sickness the crown of their hearts and of their lives. Don't give something else the crown in your heart that Jesus deserves because the crown of this virus only brings death and fear. The crown of the King of Kings brings life and peace. Lay all crowns, other crowns at his feet today like the elders in the book of Revelation when they cast their crowns up upon the, at the feet of the throne in Revelations 4.10. That really means they gave everything. They gave all the earnings of their life and everything they valued because nothing else was worth it except Jesus. If you do this today, you can be resurrected spiritually where you sit in your car or in your home or in quarantine or even a hospital bed. It doesn't matter. You can become light to a world that is darkness and really make an impact for good in the world by representing a risen king. Even if you do experience physical death, that doesn't even matter because you'll still be living in eternally with him, so death loses. It's guaranteed. We're sealed by his spirit for the day of redemption, Ephesians 4.30. Easter morning he rose to give us a life that never ends with him forever. So receive his forgiveness today, whether it's for the first time or all over again. Turn from your old ways and turn to his ways. If today you're thinking about turning to, to a bottle or, or a website or something else to fulfill you, to take away the pain and the fear that's going on in the world, just put it down and turn away from it. God will give you the strength to overcome it. All those other things will leave you empty. Turn to Jesus Christ today and receive the same resurrected breath of life that the apostles received 2,000 years ago. And you will experience peace and life in the midst of, through, and beyond death. You don't need a sinner's prayer either, but you must make a decision. And it has to be more than today. It has to be lifelong. You have to go all in. It's between you and God himself. And he'll guide you and comfort you and teach you as he promised to by his spirit. But don't stop turning to him. Don't make it just an Easter morning and a, a Christmas morning religion. More than church on Sunday. More than a Zoom call or a Facebook group or a live stream. Make him Lord of your life every single day in every area. Read his word daily and seek after him daily and no virus or storm will be too big for him to help you overcome when you are led by real promises that can never ever be broken. Jesus said in John 14, 19, a little while longer and the world will see me no more, but you will see me because I live, you will live also. And that's why we're here today and that's the promise that we trust in and it's a new source that you can trust today. Because he lives, you will live today. And if you made that decision, you are alive. No matter what comes your way, you're alive. And you'll stay alive eternally. Hallelujah. Let's pray today. Father, we give you glory that in the midst of a storm, God, the storms of the world, the storm represented by this snowstorm even, we can glorify you and find uh, the warmth of your spirit, the peace that you've offered in your sacrifice, God, and the promise you've sealed as you rose from the dead and prove who you were once and for all. 
Lord, I pray you touch homes and families, God, that this Easter we would celebrate more than ever because we have more of a reason to rejoice while the world is in discouragement and despair. Father, help us, guide us, help us to give our lives to you more and more each day and make it a lifestyle Christianity, Father. Lord, we glorify you today on this Easter morning, and we give you glory for our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Have a good day. Thank you for joining us today. God bless you.